What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. Today we're going to talk about lightning. Now I had a chance to do some testing with Firespark81 on one of my servers and we wanted to look at how much damage lightning would do in these different instances of raiding. Now you guys know if you watch my videos that I do try to stay away from the term OP. I definitely don't like to call things OP because I feel like that is a negative way to send information back to Funcom as far as what they should be looking at to change in the game. So I'm going to dive in and give you as much information as I can about the lightning spell and using it for raiding. So first of all, in order to cast lightning, you have to have 40% corruption on your character, and then you need a leather pouch. Now a leather pouch is the most expensive pouch out of all of the different pouches. However, it is not expensive. So you need two thick leather, one sacrificial blood in a flask, five alchemical base, and one weathered skull. Now you can see that half of this base has been destroyed. It has been opened up and the vault inside has actually taken damage. Now, from everything that I can tell, the damage is as random as where the lightning strikes. So sometimes you get considerable damage from a lightning strike and other times you get much less damage from a lightning strike. Now that really doesn't matter because even if you cast a hundred different lightning spells, you would still be using less resources than going after an avatar and using that to attack a base. Now for those of you that are testers as well, I don't recommend testing this against your own base. Now, it will damage your own base, but I'm pretty sure that there is a reduction in damage. I cast four different lightning spells on these three structures that I built and they were not able to really do the damage that I was able to do against Fire Sparks base. However, lightning can still do massive damage to your own base. It is particularly random how much damage each lightning strike is going to do and how much it's going to destroy of that particular base. And that's why my first tip here really isn't recommended unless you really just want to mess with whatever players are coming to attack you. And that leads me into my first tip. Now this is not my most recommended tip for dealing with someone raiding your base with lightning. However, you can cast your own lightning and that will cancel out the enemy player's lightning. Your lightning is going to do reduced damage to your base. So that would give the enemy attackers an idea that their lightning is still active and they saw a slight glitch in the lightning casting, okay? So they cast their lightning, you then cast your own lightning and that lightning does reduce damage. Now, it's definitely not my most recommended because it is still doing damage, but if you think you can use that to give you the edge over your enemies, that is something that you can do. Something else that you may have noticed me doing in this video is casting the mirror mark. The mirror mark acts somewhat like a lightning rod. So if you want to attract lightning to a certain area, casting the mirror mark is a really smart idea. So if you're going out and raiding with this, the mirror mark can help you direct lightning into a certain area. Now remember the lightning is still random, but I have seen the lightning strike the mirror mark more often than not when I cast it. Another tip to insulate you against the raiders using lightning is to actually place thralls above what you don't want to have get struck by lightning. Thralls act like an insulator and take all the damage away from the lightning. So if you can get some thralls that have high hit points and put them on the top of your base, they are going to get struck by lightning more often than not because they will be moving around and the lightning will actually be targeting them instead of the base. And when it hits the thrall, it actually transfers the total amount of damage to the thrall instead of transferring it through the thrall and into your base. However, the absolute best way to counter lightning is to just use some sorcery yourself. So there are three different sorceries that will cancel each other out. 
Lightning happens to be one of those that can be canceled. So what you wanna do is cast sorcery yourself and you're going to cast either the creeping darkness spell or you're going to cast the undead fog spell. So either one of these will cancel lightning instantaneously when you cast it. Now the creeping darkness really is just going to make it dark. So if you've honed in on your enemy and you are ready to pounce or your clan members are ready to take them out, you could cast the creeping darkness spell and then attack that player in the dark. And what you want to do is just be able to cast back and forth. So as you see, the enemy is going to cast yet another lightning storm. You're just ready to call in something that cancels it. So the lightning doesn't even have time to strike before it gets canceled out. At this point in time, what you're doing is you're playing a resource game. Do they have enough leather pouches to continue casting longer than you? Can they cast enough lightning that they overwhelm the amount of resources that you have and you can no longer cast the spells that cancel out the lightning? Now the Creeping Darkness is the cheapest way to go to cancel out lightning. So it only requires a cloth pouch so a cloth pouch is going to cost you 10 leather, two demon blood, three gold dust, and three bone meal. However, I really recommend that if you're going to cancel lightning, you cancel lightning with something that's gonna be really annoying for the other player. The attacking player is going to be very annoyed if you call in the call of the dead or the undead fog. Now that is going to cost you a leather pouch. However, the undead fog gives enemies that spawn in the area and that is going to cause the player to not be able to cast again. It doesn't matter that they don't do a ton of damage. It does matter that it's going to break them out of that casting and not let them be able to cast another spell and you may get lucky where that player certainly was not ready for those enemies to spawn in and ends up dying because they just weren't prepared for it. Now I do recommend testing this out at your base prior to deciding to counter the enemy with the undead fog. I have had situations where in a closed room, I've had all of these zombies spawn in that closed room, which really isn't going to be helpful for you. However, you can take the door off of that room and cast it and you will have them spawn on the outside of that room. The other option is to go up on some sort of balcony and cast it from there. Remember that you want it to be open to the world. You do not want to be in a closed room when you cast this because they may spawn in that closed room, really defeating the purpose of casting this in the first place. Lastly, you don't want to be too high above the game floor and have all of the zombies spawn right where you're casting it. You want to be closer to the actual mesh of the game in order to have this work properly. So that's why I say test it out in your base prior to any raids that come for you so that you can see where those zombies are going to actually spawn. And the last thing that you should know about spawning in the undead fog is the fact that your thralls are going to attack those zombies and those zombies are going to attack your thralls. So this is something where you are bringing an enemy to your base. However, the zombies really aren't that strong and so your thralls should be able to overcome them quite easily. Remember that the whole point of doing this is to simply stop lightning and stop it from damaging your base. Now I hope that these tips have helped you with both raiding and with being raided. So you know how to cancel if you are being raided and you know how to pinpoint if you are raiding. However, I would say that this still needs to have a balanced look by Funcom because it's absolutely too cheap to be able to use this sort of raiding system. Now this is absolutely the cheapest way to raid anybody's base. And for those of you that are caught offline, you are essentially just done for with a very, very cheap source to raid your base and destroy your structures. And I do feel like PVP is skewed towards raiding because it can take numerous hours to build a base that's even defendable 
or defensible against most of the things that are in the exiled lands, including bombs or avatars. After spending numerous hours building your base, somebody can come through with five hours worth of work or less and just demolish a 40 hour plus build in the matter of a few hours. And this is why I feel like PVP base raiding is so skewed. It really is skewed towards the raider and not towards the defender. And I don't feel like that skew is any different now with lightning than it was before. It's just more prevalent because lightning is so cheap and so destructive. And as a PvE player, I would say that lightning virtually has no use for me. It really is a function of a raid system for PvP. I haven't been in a situation where I really felt like lightning was going to give me such an edge against PvE content that I couldn't go without it. Now I want to know in the comment section below, if you were charged with fixing lightning or changing lightning to be better for PvP, what changes would you make? I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for your continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. If you'd like to become a legend, there's a button that says join on this page. Click that for details. There's two videos on the screen. Click one of those to watch next and I'll meet you over there.